light circle of plasmodium light circle of plasmodium plasmodium is another group of protozoa under that is classified under sporozoa or the apicomplexa we have apicomplexa they have a complex light circle because they are parasites they are specific parasites they cause diseases so plasmodium is the cause of malaria one of the world deadliest disease to today and malaria uh, has killed a lot of people in fact killed more than 1.5 million people per year so we are going to discuss the life cycle of plasmodium like we have said i said plasmodium uh, have two hosts the man as well as the uh, mosquito so how do the life cycle alternate let's start from the life cycle of plasmodium in man so in man it carries out its asexual reproduction Whereas in mosquito, it carries out in sexual reproduction. So, when an infected mosquito, okay, plasmodium is usually carried by female anopheles mosquito. Female, not all mosquitoes carry plasmodium. Female anopheles mosquito. Female anopheles mosquito. And when we talk about plasmodium, there are various species. We have plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivus. We have Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium falciparum. We also have Plasmodium malariae. But the most common one are these two: Plasmodium vivus and Plasmodium falciparum. So let's start from the life cycle in man. When an infected mosquito, that is a mosquito that has the parasite bite man in an attempt to suck blood from the body of man they ingest the sporos sporozoic stage they ingest the sporozoic stage of the parasite into the blood into the body of man so immediately the mosquito bites the man the mosquito is trying to uh, suck blood from the man but indirectly the mucor the mouth of mosquito contain the sporozoic stage of this plasmodium so that we enter into the body of man so this sporozoid we go directly to the liver cell the sporozoid go directly to the liver cell after it has been deposited in man so in the liver cell this sporozoid will initiate pre-erythrocytic circle pre-erythrocytic circle erythrocytic circle that is in the liver cell so in the liver, the sporozoid will carry out asexual reproduction by schizogony. Asexual reproduction by schizogony to give rise to the trophozoids. The trophozoids. So that is another stage of the parasite. After the preerythrocytic circle, we have the trophozoid. So this trophozoid will go directly and infect the red blood cells. That is the next stage. The trophozoite will go directly to the red blood cell, infect the red blood cells, and initiate the erythrocytic circle. Erythrocytic circle that occurs in the red blood cell. Red blood cells. So in the red blood cell too, the trophozoite also carry out schizogony. That is asexual reproduction, division of cells to form merozoites. To form merozoites. Merozoids are also another stage of the life cycle of these parasites. So this merozoid stage, we have this trophozoid stage, we have the we have the sporozoid stage, we have the trophozoid stage, and we have the merozoid stage. So the merozoid stage is the one that invades the red blood cells. So in the red blood cells, the merozoid stage also, you know, feed on the hemoglobin. It also carry out asexual reproduction. That is she's body to produce numerous merozoids or metacryptozoids. And upon this, they continue to you know feed on the hemoglobin in the red blood cells. They feed on hemoglobin in the red blood cells. That is the merozoid. When it produces numerous merozoids, 
we have, you know, they will now release hemozoin. Hemozoin, a dark brown insoluble substance called hemozoin, they will burst into the red blood cells. So when they burst into the red blood cell, they release this content into the blood. These are, that is, uh, before then, we have the, pre, in the periodic cycle, that's when we have the incubation period. It takes for like seven days before you enter the electricity cycle. The incubation period occurs in the periodic cycle. Then when we enter the electricity cycle, we have the merozoid stage. And this merozoid, I said, it feeds on red blood cells. It feeds on hemo hemoglobin in the red blood cell. And it will now release hemozoin which is, you know, not favorable to the blood. So when this emotion is being released, that is when we start feeling feverish. The chill condition of fever, that is when uh, it happens, when they release hemozoin. So after this, the merozoid or the metacryptozoid will also carry out, you know, division to give rise to gametocytes. That is still in the red blood cells, gametocytes. And we have the you know, macrogametocytes, what is the female? Macrogametocytes, macrogametocytes, gametocytes, and the microgametocytes. This one is for the female, this one is for the male. Still in the red blood cells. So all this will be present in the red blood cells, and that is the end of the life cycle in man. From the sporozoid ingested, it brings about peristaltic stage, then incubation period, which will lead to what? Shizogony. Shizogony will give a trophozoid. The trophozoid will invade the red blood cells to cause the merozoid. After the erythrocytic cycle, that is the red blood cell. The erythrocytic cycle will now give us to the merozoid. The merozoid will now feed on the hemoglobin to release hemozoin, after which we start feeling feverish condition, and this merozoid will also divide to give us the gametocyte. And that is the end of the life cycle in man. Then, when we enter the life cycle in mosquito now, life cycle of plasmodium is mosquito, So when mosquitoes are in suck the blood an infected person, somebody that is being infected with this parasite, somebody that is suffering from malaria, it means that the person already has this parasite. So when mosquitoes uh, suck the blood of an infected person, definitely they inject the, the gametocyte stage into their own body. So this gametocyte now go directly to the system to the digest system of the mosquito. Then they develop the macrogametocyte develop into the macrogamete. The macrogamete. Why the microgametocyte develop into the microgamete? Microgamete. So what happens next? Inside the digest system of the mosquito, there is a fertilization. This is the male gamete, that is the macrogamete, no female gamete. Female gamete. And the microgamete is the male gamete. Male gamete. So fertilization takes place in the digestive system, in the stomach, and there is fusion of gamete, and this gamete will give rise to the zygote. So the zygote is formed, and these zygotes are motile. They are motile, and they form what we call ukinet. Ukinet. This ukinet will go directly to form sporoblast when it forms cyst. It will insist, the ukinet will insist to form what we call sporoblast. 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 So the sporoblast will now lead to carry out division, cell division to form sporozoid. Uh, this sporozoid will now insist, it will remove the cyst and come to the saliva gland. And it will now form sporo, sporozoid which is the first stage that was infected into man. So inside the digestive, the stomach, this person will leave the stomach of mosquito and come to the salivary gland, where you know, they can easily get into the body of man. So when you talk about the life cycle of mosquito, let me draw the sample somewhere here. Let's say these are mosquito, salivary gland of mosquito, salivary gland of mosquito, and it bites you know, a healthy person, it will enter into the liver for pre-erythrocytic circle and from the liver, that's when it converts 
from sporozoid to the trophozoid, and the trophozoid will go directly to the red blood cell. The trophozoid will go directly to the red blood cell. This is the liver cell of man. The trophozoid will go directly to the red blood cell, and this red blood cell will now carry out uh, cell division to form the merozoite. So the merozoite will now form the gametocyte. This gametocyte will now go directly to the uh, body of mosquito, the alimentary canal of mosquito, digestive system of mosquito. So from the extra of mosquito, we now go back. That is the sporozoid. The sporozoid that is formed in the mosquito will go to the salivary gland of mosquito. So this is the man. So this is mosquito, while this one is man. So this is mosquito, the diet cell of mosquito, this is a uh, salivary gland of mosquito, this is the liver cell of man, this is the red blood cell of man. So this is the life cycle of plasmodium. Uh, we can also draw it in another thing where the sporozoid gives the what? The strophozoid, the trophozoid gives the merozoid, the merozoid gives the gametocyte, and the gametocyte carry out function. Uh, we can also draw it on the other way around. Let's say we have the sporozoid in the mosquito. The sporozoid, that is what the mosquito release. It now releases into the body to form the uh, trophozoid. Trophozoid. The trophozoid that is as a result of a sexual reproduction, a sexual reproduction, sorry, by schizogony in the liver cell. That is peritonistic circle, which will give us to what? The merozoid in the liver cell, in the red blood cells. Merozoids. That is in the red blood cells. And this merozoid will carry out another sexual reproduction, a sexual reproduction to give us the gametocytes. Gametocytes. And I said we have the male gametocyte and the female gametocyte. So we have the macro gametocyte. Macro gametocyte, gametocyte, and we have the micro gametocyte, micro and macro gametocyte that is in the blood cells. Then we also have it will not enter the body of the mosquito, this will form the micro gamete, micro gamete, and macro gamete in the mosquito. In the intestine of mosquito, we have fertilization, and this fertilization will give rise to zygotes, and zygotes will give rise to okinet. Okinet, the okinet will give rise to sporo, sporoblast, and the sporoblast will finally give rise to the sporozoid. So we have the mosquito. This is the life cycle. So this is what the mosquito released into the man. So this is in man, the life cycle in man, the life cycle in mosquito. So this is the life cycle of a uh, life cycle of plasmodium. You can see how the plasmodium moves from one organism to the other during the stage of its uh, life cycle. So now we are moving to the economic importance of plasmodium. What are the economic pl importance of plasmodium? Who plasmodium F? One economic importance or the first economic importance is that plasmodium causes disease. Malaria is one of the you know deadliest diseases in the world. Economic importance of plasmodium. I said one, the plasmodium causes disease. Malaria causes disease. That is malaria. Malaria is one of the deadliest diseases in the world today, especially in the African region. Plasmodium also causes convulsion in children. It causes convulsion in children. It causes abortion of pregnancy. It also reduces working hour. Reduce working arm, reduce working arm, plasmodium, plasmodium reduce working arm. It also causes headache, you know, high fever, it causes high temperature, causes high temperature, and the cost of controlling this disease is 
very expensive. The cost of uh, controlling it is very expensive. So those are the economic importance or the effect of plasmodium. They cause disease malaria, they reduce working hour, the increase in temperature, they cause combustion in children, they cause uh, uh, abortion of pregnancy. They can also be used in medical research, medical uh, parasitology. So those are the importance. We also have plasmodium, importance of plasmodium. Generally, the importance of our protozoa, economic importance of protozoa. Not all protozoa, not all protozoa are plasmodium, but all plasmodium are protozoa. So we want to understand the economic importance of protozoa. Protozoa, there are some protozoa that are, you know, that's used, that can be used to break down cellulose. They carry out symbiotic relationship with an other organism. So they carry out, they, they use to break down, break down a cellulose. Break down of cellulose is some other organism that is a uh, protozoa. Some are used as agent of uh, water pollution. They are also used as agent of water pollution when they, you know, they are flow on the surface of water and they make the water unfit for drinking. They can also be used uh, in research in the genetics. They are of medical importance. They can be used in genetics in research. They can be used in research in genetics. The protozoa can also serve as food directly or indirectly to some organism in aquatic environment. They serve as food. They can be used as food directly. They can be used as food directly or indirectly. They can serve as water pollution. They can also they can also be used in water purification when they break down organic content in the water. Purification. So they can be used in various means. Like I said, you know, medical importance, water purification, they serve as food, they break down cellulose, water pollution, uh, and so on and so forth. So that is all about the protozoa. Don't forget to subscribe when you watch.